Hi everyone, welcome to the shack, or at least the back garden. Um, we're looking at a horizontal V dipole that I built a couple of days ago um, to receive telemetry data from the NOAA weather satellites. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, a friend of mine at Harwell uh, Amateur Radio Society has been doing it for a while and um, some of the images that he's managed to collect and decode were um, really quite amazing. I was greatly inspired by that. Um, it all happened because I was asked to manage one of Harwell's uh, online platforms and I sort of connected with him and then saw some of his images. But, uh, I think he's using, um, uh, or he built a turnstile antenna, which is basically a sort of twin horizontal dipole um, uh, for circular polarisation, which is the polarisation for the uh, for the signal that is transmitted uh, via the satellites on um, FM. Uh, me being me though, taking the shortcut, easy route, I found a design for a horizontal V dipole um, with the radiators cut to 137.5 megahertz, so effectively uh, a cold wave each, and um, just literally plugged into um, a coaxial cable. It works really well. There's two benefits actually. One is that you only lose 3 dB of signal um, from the uh, polarisation alone. Um, but you also gain 20 dB of attenuation from the uh, man-made noise, the QRM. So uh, the, the noise that I had on this band is still not great, but it was horrendous. But, um, uh, I, because I tested all of this with my collinear and got some really terrible images. So um, I've reduced the uh, effects of the local QRM by 20 dB and I've only lost 3 dB of actual signal and when the satellite comes over I'm getting a big signal. Um, height isn't absolutely necessary but it helps on the edges of the image at north and south because obviously when the satellite passes over the horizon the signal to noise um, is actually quite poor uh, but obviously steadily improves with elevation um, and this actually works really well now. Um, I still get noise bars etc but most people do uh, unless you've got a perfect setup but uh, it works really well the purpose of this video is just to give some to give you an overview one of my subscribers just asked if I would do a video on how I did this so this is an overview I'll probably do a separate video on the antenna to explain how I built it and maybe some other elements of the, of the setup but um, let's just go back in the shack so when I first tried this um, I tried it with the uh, FT991A and that didn't work because you need about 50 kilohertz of audio bandwidth um, FM wide basically um, to capture the signal. Um, it's also quite useful because it means that you don't need to do anything to offset the uh, change in frequency from Doppler shift um, and you obviously you, you, you know you, you don't get that uh, audio bandwidth on this rig and I think most desktops uh, ham rigs won't, won't give you that on uh, on FM. Um, did a bit of research and I knew that uh, the best way to do this was to use an, an SDR. You can do this with a very simple or cheap uh, RTL SDR dongle. I've got one in Newelec, but uh, with I bought it with an up converter to use it on HF. Um, but I couldn't find it, and in any case, I thought I'll go I'll go for a better rig. So uh, I'm using the SDR Play RSP. DX, which works uh, very well. Um, right, I'll just share my screen with you. So um, I use SDR Uno, um, and if you've got this particular SDR rig, then um, you'll ha already have that set up. Um, and basically, the NOAA satellites transmit on 137 point something. Uh, megahertz, uh, 19 transmits on 137.1, 18 transmits on 137.9125 and 15 transmits on 137.62. 15 is a bit sick at the moment, I can't remember the reason why but 15 isn't actually uh, delivering or, or transmitting very good data so um, I'm focusing on um, 19 uh, and 18. Um, what's important is that you have the right audio bandwidth so 50 kilohertz, um, and that the output from your rig goes via, I use a virtual audio cable, into your sound card, which can then be read by the software. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll do another, I'll do a separate video on how to do this with this with the RSPDX, um, 
because there are a few settings there that you need to get right. Um, although having said that, it, it is fairly straightforward. Um, and then as for the actual software itself that does the decoding, so that's WX2IMG. It's a free download. Um, and what it does is once, once it's got the data, it um, saves it as an, an audio file. And from that then generates a sort of raw image. And then you, from that point, you can select the type of images that you actually want to, um, to collect. So, you know, infrared, precipitation, etc., etc. I won't go into it now. Um, and it's really simple and straightforward to use. Um, it will also give you the uh, satellite um, pass list. So it has all the satellite data on it. But the original version used to do this automatically. You actually need another piece of software now, Kepler Update. Kepler Updata software to keep this thing um, uh, up to date. Um, again, that's a free download. Um, so if I actually take you there. So the actual download of the software, you want to go to wx2imgrestored.xyz. That's the best website to download the actual software to, that will decode the telemetry and then go to GitHub and then just do a search for Kepler's Updata for WXT IMG and that gives you that piece of software. And just, if you open this piece of software every few days, then you're ensured that all the satellite pass data um, uh, from, from that you're accessing from WXT IMG is correct. Um, I do the live tracking um, online um, so I use n2yo.com um, and you can choose whichever satellite you want and it will give you a map um, with a sort of footprint of um, how it of how and when you can access it um, as well which uh, is, is quite interesting um, and then when you've got a setup that's working properly this is what your signal will look like as you can see this is 50 kilohertz and you can see the actual signal itself is probably 40 kilohertz wide maybe a bit more these not this noise which is still quite bad and is still affecting my images um, was much worse when i was using the vertical collinear excuse me i'll just switch my power supply off um so this is an example of a signal of a good signal and one which i obtained um using the v dipole um and that's about it so that's the overview. Um, this is a, a, an image I obtained last night um, from NOAA 18, um, which I think is pretty good. You can see this noise here is basically the, down to the signal to noise at low uh, elevation. So the satellites always pass from north to south or south to north. Um, and at low elevation, the, sig the, the signal to noise is always um, worse than it is once it's reached a you know higher elevation and then as it goes then back from back towards the horizon it gets it you know it, it, it the signal to noise decreases again but in gen but generally the bit you're interested in which is europe which i'm interested in um is usually pretty clear with with this particular antenna so so there you go so that's my sort of brief overview of um how i have been receiving and decoding um uh, the noaa weather satellite uh, telemetry. Um, I'll do a separate video on how I constructed the antenna um, and I'll do a video on exactly what I did to set up the SDR Uno although some of you with experience will probably be able to figure that out yourselves but I'll do a quick a quick video um, on that and how to route the audio and then um, I'll do a brief video on using WX2IMG because that's again been done before um, um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just share the settings that, that I use, etc. So, um, yeah, it's been quite interesting. There's some examples here where you can see some of the early images I got were actually terrible. Um, and then all of a sudden, when I put that antenna up, it all, it all got much better. Um, and it's, uh, it's quite nice, actually. It's um, it, I'm not exactly addictive, perhaps, but uh, it is, there's no doubt that it's interesting to be able to view the weather that's you know within minutes of the satellite passing so there you go <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i've been talking too long um so that's my uh, overview um of how i've been um receiving and uh decoding 
uh, the, this uh, weather satellite data. Um, I want to, uh, a, a quick shout out to the, um, a ham, um, 9 Alpha 4 Queen Victor, um, who actually had details of the um, V dipole design uh, on his webpage, which, uh, which I've used. So a shout out to whoever that is. Uh, I think his name's Adam, so thank you very much for that information. Um, very straightforward to build, uh, but as I said, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'll, I'll do that as a separate video. So, uh, so there you go. So, anyway, next satellite is coming over um, in two hours and ten minutes, and that one is um, number fifteen, which doesn't have a very good. Um, uh, but apparently, he's sick and doesn't seem to. Um, transmit uh, very good data but uh, we'll see anyway i hope that was interesting thanks for watching if you try it yourself good luck and uh, give me your comments um uh, uh once you've seen the video be really interested to hear what you've got to say on it thanks a lot 73